Good morning. How's everybody doing today? It's Josh Goldstein, your favorite immigration lawyer, coming to you today live from my backyard. I'm here to answer your questions about immigration law and to talk to you about the latest immigration topics of the day. Hope everybody is having a fantastic day um, today. And uh, I, I'll tell you what's on my mind is the events in um, in the Capitol this week. I still can't wrap my mind around what happened. Um, I was just beginning to process the results from the Georgia uh, runoff elections uh, when this happened, um, and it's very alarming. It's very alarming. But I think the results of the election in Georgia are going to have a massive, massive impact on the uh, on the election. Uh, I'm sorry, not on the election, on the uh, on the immigration prospects in the new in the new year. Amy Maldonado, what will Im what will Biden's immigration bill look like? Amy is a ringer. We have a ringer amidst us. Amy is a fantastic immigration lawyer and a dear friend. Um, you know, Amy, um, we have a 50-50 split in the Senate. So in order to pass any bill, we will need every single vote. Every single vote. We'll need 50 votes. Um, there are a lot of conservative Democrats. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'll tell you my take on Biden and immigration. Nothing Biden will do will ever disappoint me. He defeated Trump. Um, and that's all like any, anything else is icing on the cake. Um, but I mean, if I had my wish list, I would repeal IRA, IRA, the 1996 immigration law, I would repeal that on the spot. Um, expansion of DACA. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm no expert on politics. I think a new Voting Rights Act would be a, a, a key priority. Distribution of the vaccine. I mean, there's so much. There's so much to think about. Um, great question. Great question. Um, but you know, it does expand our expectations now that we have control. The Democrats have control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. It expands our expectations for what is possible. Um, new laws could be possible. New law could be possible. Amen deep. Good morning in Oakland. Love the Bay Area. It is so beautiful there. It's so beautiful. Um, thank you so much. Um, let's see here. It's working. Am I live here? Hi, I'm back and I'm live. Um, hope I didn't miss you all. I'm just having a little tea. I'm going to answer your questions. Um, what do you think about, uh, the new incoming Biden Homeland Security? <clears throat> um, I think it'll be far more favorable to immigrants than Trump. I mean, that's, I guess, very, very obvious. Um, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that it will be better than, um, Obama better. I mean, we could have the most pro immigration administration in my, in my career. I mean, that's not saying much. Um, so um, here we have Mohamud. If we want to hire you, sir, about our spouses live in Minnesota and you live in California, how can we communicate with you? Um, I have clients in Minnesota. I have clients in North Dakota. I have clients in Somalia, Afghanistan. I have clients all over the place. We communicate through WhatsApp. Um, we communicate through email, uh, Zoom, uh, whatever, you know, all the means. In fact, if you lived in my city or if you lived across the street from me, I'd handle your case the same way as if you lived in, in Minnesota because everything in my practice right now is virtual. And sometimes people say, oh, well, I really want to meet with you. 
I want to meet with you in person, but I don't want to do that because of the pandemic. So I'm trying to trying to uh, do things virtually to keep you safe. Moonlight K1 interviews. We need those. We need them now. We need them now. We definitely need them. The sooner the better. Um, my friend Richard in Belize um, was talking about human trafficking. Um, there is a waiver for human trafficking. You should look into that. Um, I don't know if it, uh, you would qualify for the waiver, but take a look at that. Our friend from YouTube. Thank you so much, Richard, for your question. Um, yes, we do. Get us some interviews. Um, any chance of banned nationalities such as Syria from entering the U.S.? Um, the travel ban or the Muslim ban that the Supreme Court said was okay, um, then um, that was going to be gone. Um, that's going to be gone. Uh, what other questions? Here we go from Aisha, our friend on uh, YouTube. Good afternoon. When should I go for biometric figures? And my 150 days is ending on January 21st. Can I apply for a work permit? Um, <clears throat> all right. So I think your question pertains to asylum. Um, I'm just guessing because I don't know. But I think... Uh, I think there is a question about when you can get a work permit and usually you can apply 180 days after you your asylum application has been pending um leonardo freitas are we likely to see significant changes on eb2 national interest waiver adjudications during the biden administration um i don't think that there'll be significant changes no fundamental changes to the program um but you know the first question I started off with, will there be a new immigration bill? Um, there could be changes to the law, but um, I think, you know, national interest waiver, EB2 cases, we ha handle these typically for scientists and other people like that. They're people who have incredibly impressive academic and professional accomplishments. And they, um, you know, people who have patents and publications and really impressive accolades and accomplishments and also they're doing something that's in the national interest we're able to help people get green cards without an employer that's what those cases are about um here we say we have dave dave says um sorry if it's a little windy maybe there's some noise but I wanted to record in my backyard because it's such a beautiful view out here and also because my kids are inside um, kind of running around and being a little loud. So Dave says, uh, first of all, Dave, thank you so much for tuning in from um, YouTube. Um, I'm making a whole bunch of YouTube videos over the weekend to answer people's questions. Um, I'm going to make one video about what to do if your immigration case gets denied. If the consulate says, sorry. We're not going to give you the visa and they send it back to USCIS. What do you do in that situation? Um, but to answer Dave's question, says, as a citizen, I applied for my brother in November 2010. He got approved, but we're waiting for a visa to be available. It's been 10 years. Do you have any advice? Um, first of all, a petition for a sibling takes a really, really long time. And I mean, it takes 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. Maybe even more if you're from the Philippines or uh, India or something like that. I call these cases the retirement visa because if you apply for your brother or your sister, with any luck, they'll be able to retire in the U.S. Um, it takes a lifetime, and it's very cruel to have families separated for so long um, in that way. But um, do I have any advice on what you can do? First of all, a lot of my videos are about how to get delayed visas approved. And um, I don't really have any advice. I, there's nothing you can do about the overall processing times. But one thing I want you to know is that um, you need to explore other immigration options. Is your brother eligible for the diversity visa lottery, for example? Um, you know, that would be one question I would ask and, and just begin to answer those questions. But it's a long wait, and I sympathize for you with you. Um, Hader Ahmadi, my friend, my brother on 
YouTube, what a beautiful, beautiful child you have there. Love the picture. It says here, hello, sir. Can I expect, can I request an expedite request for an IR1 visa interview appointment or should we wait till January 20th because of the new administration will start? Regards from Kabul, Afghanistan. Um, the situation in Afghanistan is challenging um, and I hope you and your family are safe and remain safe. Um, you can always ask for an expedite request, but let me let me address part of your question. You said, should we wait for January 20th for the new administration? I am not a fan of waiting. I don't think you should wait, none of you. Um, January 20th is two weeks from now, roughly. Um, but I think you should go and you should take action now. Put in your expedite request. It doesn't cost you anything. And if it doesn't work, then you can uh, you can try it again in a, in a few weeks. Um, but but tr go now. Try it. Um, Miss Daniels, how long after your K-1 visa application is received should we reach out to you for help? Well, you can always reach out to me for help. And if you have questions, please um, give me a shout. Uh, but I help people with delayed visas. And my technique for getting a delayed case approved is to file a lawsuit against the consulate, the State Department, USCIS, and other agencies. I file these lawsuits after the underlying visa petition has been pending for at least one year. So if you contact me after eight months and you say, look, I can't take it anymore. I want you to help me get this approved. I would tell you to wait the full year before filing the lawsuit. Um, so that's what I would do. Um, what's up with executive orders for people with valid visas yet to expire? Any hope? Yes. I'm hoping that those executive orders are going to disappear on January 20th along with the guy who signed them, Trump. So these are good questions. I'm enjoying this. I'm going to have a little more of my, uh, let's see if you can see this, my bunny tea. I have my bunny tea this morning. I always like to drink tea when I come on live. A little black tea or Earl Grey to start my day. Um, my, um, my computer, you can't see it, but it's next to a bird feeder. And we're all out of bird seeds, so we're going to get some more bird seeds so that we can have these beautiful birds um, come and visit us in the morning. It's really a... It's quite a beautiful thing, and um, we're spending a lot of time at home uh, trying to stay safe and avoid um, other people um, because of the virus situation is in California, um, but this is a good place to be. They must hate seeing your name on a lawsuit. Well, they see my name a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calculate how many lawsuits I filed last year because, frankly, I don't even know how many lawsuits I filed, um, but it's, it's in the hundreds and hundreds. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I mean, some consulates in, you know, I think Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Casablanca, I sued them so many times, so many times and others as well. Um, is the, is delay by NVC a reason to expedite a case? The, the DQ date, um, is July 10th. The priority date is July. Yeah. So. Um, I'm not sure, uh, Daniela, thank you for your question, by the way. I'm not sure what type of visa that you have. What what type of visa? Is it a fiancé visa or something else? Um, but anyway, if you filed an underlying visa petition in July of 2019, that is crazy. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't have to wait any longer than that. I would file a lawsuit against them right away. I would sue them, and um, uh, that's how I would expedite a case. But you can always request that it be expedited. I have a very skeptical view of expedite requests because um, they're very rarely granted and they don't really do what you expect them to do. So, I mean, you can always, so she says it's marriage-based. Yeah, I mean, that's a case where I would take on the case and I would file a lawsuit against them. I would, if, if you came to me, I would recommend that you hire them, that you, that you sue them. Um, Council, hello from Princeton. The Tigers. Happy Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. 
Um, we will be emailing you my questions and get you paid for a consultation under my insurance policy. Okay, sure. Email me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. I didn't know about this. No one told me. Hey, Josh, my green card expires on January 1st. I've been checking my receipt notice, but nothing. I'm in limbo. Um, hmm. Tell me more, Cecilia. Um, I wonder what's going on with your case. Your green card expired in February. Um, your receipt notice, but nothing. I'm not sure what you're... Is this... Tell me more about what particular type of case you have. I'd like to know more. Um, Gamal. Sir, I get a letter after my Alan, my interview, December 30th, IR1, under Section 221G, requesting transcripts for my wife and joint sponsor. If I send what, what they want via email, will they issue my visa? I certainly hope so. I hope so. But Gamal, what happens in this situation, what I find is they ask you for documents, you send documents, and then they make you wait and wait and wait. And what I do in that situation is I help people by filing lawsuits. Uh, Celia has an I-90 to renew. Celia, why don't you file for naturalization? Become a U.S. citizen. We need you on Team USA. Um, if you're eligible, if you're eligible, file an I, file a, um, N-400. You can file the N-400 even if the I-90 is not approved, if you're eligible. Um, if you're not, I-90s take a long time. An I-90 is an application to renew a green card. So if you have a 10-year green card and the green card renew is expired, um, you can file an application to renew it. It just takes a very, very long time, as Celia knows. Um, I don't really have any advice on what you can do to expedite that, except to tell you to keep waiting and consider naturalization. Get yourself on Team USA. I can help you with that. Uh, let's... It just takes a really, really long time, and it's so frustrating. Elizabeth, when you get an appreciation to the immigration and it's incomplete, and they said send it back with a green paper and stay, you must send it back with a green paper on top. Uh, don't know what you're getting at, but I, Elizabeth, I thank you for your question. I hope you're well, and um, Celia, email me. Yes, thank you. Okay, Linda, thank you for your question. Thank you for your question, and I hope you're having a ha – can I still wish people a happy new year? Um, I am over 30, and my mother has filed for me. It's been three years long. How long do I have to wait? These cases take a really long time, eight, ten years maybe, um, and uh, uh, depends on where – if you're located in the U.S., you may not even be eligible to get a green card if you're out of status. Depends on your situation. Um, I'm going to go next to a question from Laura. Laura asked me a question, and then she went down, and she said, please answer my question. So I feel bad I haven't gotten to you. Um, hello. I hope you're at, if you're in Austria, that's wonderful. What a beautiful country. Um, Laura Leinbacher says, I'm from Austria. He's in the U.S. We decide to get married and to go with a CR1 instead of a K1, but we don't have a shared bank account. Do we need a lawyer? Um, Laura, congratulations on getting married. Um, that's awesome. And uh, uh, we file a lot of marriage-based cases along with fiance visa cases. So I think that either choice is fine. We don't have a shared bank account. Do we need a lawyer? Um, well, you know, it's very self-serving for me as a lawyer to tell people you should hire a lawyer, but it's still, it's true that I have a lot of insight into the process. And I think I'm going to be making some videos coming up on things you can do to show that your marriage relationships are genuine. But at the core of it is that you have to show that your marriage relationship is genuine. And that can be hard to do when he is in the U S and you're in Austria, you're not yet living together. Um, some ideas off the top of my head um, are to show that you have maybe that he visited you or that he has visited you. I know that's difficult during the pandemic. Um, what 
how do you tell your story about your relationship? Um, how did you meet? And how often do you talk? Do you chat on WhatsApp? Can you save those messages? Can you share those messages? Um, it's not just about bank account, although that, you know, financial documents is, is are one thing. Um, can I still apply for naturalization while removal of condition is pending? Um, my marriage is three years old. The answer is yes, if you have been continuously living together. Okay, you have to be continuously living together to do that. And you have to meet other requirements. But the answer generally is yes. And I, I'm a big fan of applying for naturalization if you have a pending green card application, which because it takes a really long time. And I love citizenship anyway. Um, so there's that. Um, Laura, thank you. We visit each other five times. That's a lot of proof. Good luck. Let me know if you need help. Um, I, I'm rooting for you. I would just move to Austria if I were him. But, you know, the food is great. The people are great. Skiing. Um, that's where I would go. Uh, Harshim Ranjit Singh. Our friend on LinkedIn. Um, I've just started broadcasting to LinkedIn. I didn't even know that I could do that. Um, but here I am on LinkedIn. I have a question related to F2 visa for my wife. She received the petition approved for F2A, but now she is married and falls under F2B. What must she do? Her mother will get citizenship next year. I think you have to just keep waiting for the visa to be approved and when you switch categories it could go longer or you could disqualify yourself it depends veronica duarte coming to us on youtube good morning and happy new year i can i still wish people happy new year i guess i can my boyfriend is an american citizen and i'm dominicana we have a two-year relationship. I'd like to know if he can sponsor and how long does it take? Yes, he could sponsor you through a fiancé petition or through a marriage petition if you were to get married. How long would it take? That is a great question and no one really knows. I can tell you how long it used to take before the pandemic. I used to tell people if you had a fiancé visa, it would take about one year from when you file the petition until you come into the U.S. and, and get your visa. And if it's a marriage-based petition, it would probably take uh, maybe a little longer, 15 months, something like that. Um, Veronica, let me know if you need help or you have questions. Um uh kushbu can my husband apply for citizenship if he gets a new green card in 2020 he has a drug history um well what does it mean to have a drug history um i don't know exactly what that means i would need to review i mean you should have a lawyer very carefully review the situation and figure out what drug history means um take a look at if there are any criminal documents related to the case i'd like to review those to see um, what's going on. Dan, I have a big debit with the hospital that happened when my twins were born. Do I have to declare it on my I, form I-944? Do you think that it can harm my AOS process? Um, so uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm sorry you have this uh, 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 issue. And I mean, nobody should have, nobody should have debt from a medical issue. And I hope that um, that that is uh, something that's addressed through legislation. And I'm sorry you have to deal with this. Um, I think the I-944 is pretty comprehensive, and you have to look at it very carefully. Um, and there are a lot of factors that go into the I-944 that has to do with your. Um, 
self-sufficiency and so on. And I suspect that this application will be um, will disappear um, after the Biden is uh, inaugurated. I mean, it may take a little more time to undo that, but that's kind of what I think. Here we have Jaja or Yaya. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but I want to thank you so much for your question and for tuning in. My fiance is American. Congratulations on getting engaged to get married. Um, he already filed the K-1 visa in October of 2020. How long does it take to get any update about my pace? We've been in a three-year visit relationship. He visited me twice. Um, again, before the pandemic, such a case would take about a year. And so I'm hopeful that by the fall, if everything goes well, you should get your, um, you should get your uh, interview. I'm hopeful. But again, with the pandemic and and the political situation, it's it's hard to say. Um, after Biden is inaugurated, they're going to be working through a massive backlog of old cases. So things could take longer. It's not just like when Biden gets in there, they're going to be puppy dogs and, and, and cupcakes for everyone. That's going to take time. <clears throat> oh, I have a good question here from Shahab. Uh, our friend on YouTube, thank you so much. It says here, uh, I submitted my citizenship application in the middle of September, but I did not get a biometric appointment. What should I do? Okay, here's what you should do. First of all, don't freak out. And secondly, you should know that many people who apply for naturalization are not, not getting nat a biometrics appointment. What they're doing is they're using the biometric information from their previous immigration applications, which raises a question. How come they didn't do that anyway? Just in the past, they should have, that's the way they should have always done it. Um, but the question though, what should you do? One thing to keep in mind is that the biometric appointment for naturalization, they would typically give you a booklet to study uh, the civic for the civics test. Okay. And um, you are not going to get that because you're not, you may not get your biometrics appointment. So what you should do is go on the internet and um, find the USCIS website that, um, that gives information about biometrics and start studying. And Celia says, I love to herd the birds in your garden. Me too, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, it's, me, it, it's really great. Um, Norton. I got married. Congratulations, Norton. My wife filed for a green card, but because I enter illegally, they told me to go back to my country for the interview and they turned me down. What can I do? I'm sorry to hear that, Norton. Um, you need a lawyer. You need to reach out to me uh, or another good lawyer, but um, you need to. we need to figure out why you got denied and what happened. And if you did work with a lawyer, you need to um, you need to get that sorted out. Um, I'd love to help you. So Edward said, "What's a biometric appointment?" Um, okay, so if you apply for a green card or a work permit or really anything, in order to um, in order to um, in order to 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 get the uh, document. They do a security check on you. They check your background. They see if you've ever had any problems with the law and they take your picture and their fingerprints. And that's what it is. Um, let's see here. Um, here we have DeMarthas. How long does it take now to do adjustment of status? So first of all, before I answer your question, what is adjustment of status? Adjustment of status is a process of becoming a permanent resident inside the United States where you're in a different status and you move from, for example, a student visa or a visitor visa or an H-1B visa to green card status. And the answer, the question is, how long does it take to do that? Well, there are many different reasons for why 
that may change. It may vary based on where you live, based on um, based on where you live, based on the type of case that you have. Um, and right now, the processing times are very unpredictable. Um, <clears throat> ah, Sunshine Power, the PAL family. I will get back to you later today or tomorrow as soon as I can. Um, thank you for your email. Um, Divine Centino, thank you for your question. How to apply for a master's degree in the University of Illinois, United States for school study? Um, I have no idea how you would do that. I think you need to contact the admissions office at that university and check it out. Um, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.